very important for us to, to uh, recognize the incarnational aspect of our faith. It's through the world and, and ultimately the church that we come to know God and encounter him as he is. And the quintessential places that that happens is at the monasteries, the places where God literally dwells with men. Uh, and a monastery is a very special place. It's a, it's a house of prayer. A lot of times people say, well, what do monasteries do? And the most important thing we can say is, is we pray for the salvation of the world. Here at our monastery, the Monastery of St. Tikhon of Zadonsk, we've had liturgy almost every day for more than 111 years. It's our good work that we do, and it's a very important work. Uh, St. Silouan says is that when real prayer fails on the earth, the world will come to an end. And so prayer is really that central aspect through which we actualize our union with God. Really, it's the reason why we were created was for this union. You know, a lot of times the existential question people ask, why am I here? And we say, you were created to know God and through this knowledge, which is communion, to become eternal yourself. That's what salvation is. And so this work of prayer that the monastics offer for the world keeps the world together. It enables uh, miracles uh, to happen in lives of, of individuals who come here, people who ask us for prayers. And we always, are, of course, are praying for the peace and the stability of the whole world. Uh, we can only imagine um, in times past how many times God listened to the prayers of hermits and monastics and righteous men and women uh, throughout the world to stop wars and to miraculously end conflicts that uh, would have not ended otherwise. And so as we make our pilgrimages to the monasteries, uh, we ourselves can be transfigured and transformed through this encounter with God who dwells in these monasteries in a very special way. The grace at the monastery is, is different than that in the church because it's much more uh, vibrant, it's much more apparent. Uh, it's, it's through the sacrifice of the lives of many, many holy men and women who lived here at the monastery um, that have been able to, to bring down God's benediction on this place. And ultimately, it was their sacrifice that really watered the seeds to bear abundant fruit for us to partake of and to be renewed by, to be strengthened by, to be challenged by, and ultimately to find healing. A lot of times uh, people uh, want to go on vacation, and, and the reality is is that uh, oftentimes we'll, we'll hear the saying that people went on vacation, they came back more tired than when they, than when they left. And uh, it's the exact opposite. When people leave the monastery, they come tired and beaten down and worn down. And through that prayerful encounter with God and through uh, being on the grounds, the quiet, the peace, the blessing of God, it, it, it invigorates them and it enlivens them, it renews them, inspires them, and enables them to continue to grow in, a, in, a, in the Christian walk, uh, giving them new strength for that battle and sending them back out into to their lives uh, renewed, in, uh, reinvigorated, and ultimately um, closer to the Lord and able to, to kind of deal with the realities that come. So it's very important for us to realize that the really important part that monasteries play in the church and the pilgrimages to those monasteries that we can take if we, if we just make the time and understand the importance that it's ultimately uh, in our best interest uh, to take this time for ourselves in order to find true healing and true, true revitalization.